Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tippet for Thursday, September 29th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, here's Matthew continuing to move quickly off to the west in the Central Caribbean after bringing uh, tropical storm conditions to portions of the Lesser Antilles last night. Has steadily intensified during the day today. Uh, previously had an exposed center of circulation earlier this morning, but has since developed deep convection over the center and uh, has intensified and developed an inner core here. And this is now a hurricane with winds of 75 miles per hour as the storm moves off toward the west at about 15 miles per hour. This is the recon aircraft currently flying in there, found a pressure of about 988 millibars, so the drop sound indicated it may have been more about 987, and in general strong hurricane force winds extend to a pretty substantial distance into the northeastern quadrant of the storm and in the northern semicircle. Uh, the tropical storm force winds on the south side are also increasing in extent over time, and this could become a potential issue for some of the islands uh, near Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, the northern tip of Colombia here, and parts of Venezuela, as the system may begin to take a bit of a west-southwest dip in its track over the next 24 to 48 hours. And this could bring tropical storm force winds in squalls uh, periodically into this region here. And so a tropical storm watch is in effect for that region. You can see why it's going to turn west-southwest in general because of this trade wind flow moving in this direction on your screen. And this is true at about the 500 millibar level as well. So this hurricane in the low and mid levels is being steered by that deep layer flow in general has kind of a southward component to it. And thus the hurricane will follow that most likely over the next day or two. And in fact, on radar right now, we can actually perhaps pick out some south southern component to the motion already here this evening, if you look at the last few frames here, it may already beginning be beginning to move toward the west-southwest. And you can see an eye showing up pretty clear here, which is why we can see that motion so well, because we do have an inner core developing, and there is an eye that is showing up on radar. So this has clearly got the look of a hurricane and is continuing to organize. Now the question is, how fast will it continue to intensify over the next couple of days? And the answer is, it will likely continue uh, to get better defined and stronger, but it may not do so very rapidly, given that there are a couple of things it's still struggling with. One is the southwesterly wind shear. That was the reason for its exposed surface center this morning. It's still there. We have this general troughiness over the Gulf of Mexico in the northwest Caribbean, so there's this general light southwesterly flow aloft over the hurricane right now. And uh, this is compounded by the fact that the hurricane is moving pretty quickly westward with the trade winds. And so you have easterly flow at the low levels, southwesterly flow aloft. This is a shear that pushes the thunderstorms off to the northeastern side of the system, or at least attempts to. And this is likely to uh, continue impinging upon the system's organization. You can see that convection, although it has formed over the center this evening, is still a little bit ragged in appearance. Uh, obviously this is only a category one, so we don't expect to see a clear eye or anything like that at this point, but this is still a pretty ragged inner core and not fully formed. A rather immature storm still at this stage, and the wind shear will not be helping with that over the next couple of days. That could limit how fast it's able to get going. In addition, You'll notice this region up near Hispaniola where the uh, the satellite picture is pretty gray here. This is clear blue sky. There is not even any low-level cumulus clouds in this region here. This indicates very dry air in the low to mid levels of the troposphere southwest of Hispaniola. And we're going to have to watch uh, to see if Matthew gets farther west over the next couple of days and starts to wrap some of this dry air in to the circulation at that time. It's hard to say at this point whether that will happen, but we'll have to keep an eye on this as it gets a little bit farther west. But uh, pending that, uh, some gradual intensification is likely to continue. Hurricanes don't generally like the central part of the Caribbean, but they can intensify in it, and Matthew looks like it's doing just that right now. That trend is likely to continue in general over the next 48 hours. Now, the track after this uh, continues to get a little bit uncertain, but we're generally confident at this point that after this west-southwest dip near Columbia, it's going to slow down, and then by the time we get to Sunday, it's likely to start turning northward here, and in general make a northward turn towards Jamaica, Haiti, and eastern Cuba. Exactly where it moves over this region is still a little bit uncertain at that range, but one of these three countries is pretty likely to get a direct hit from Matthew in three days or so three or four days. And this is going to 
bring the hurricane up most likely into the Bahamas after that, but then things get a little bit uncertain. We do have this trough here, which will continue to sit over the Gulf of Mexico, which is why the hurricane must turn north because it can't move into the trough. So it will make that turn, but after that, uh, things are a little bit undecided. This is the GFS out to day four, 500 millibars, showing the hurricane over eastern Jamaica at this time. This is Monday morning, so about four days from now. And again, the GFS has been shifting west over time. Originally, it was over the Dominican Republic, and it's been shifting west and west and west, gradually run to run as it has picked up on a stronger Bermuda Ridge here and perhaps a little bit of weaker trough over the northern gulf and again the big issue with the system's track forecast is how long it sits in the caribbean because the european continues to be a slower solution and it's not clear how long uh, this west southwest dive will last and how long it will sit near columbia before it gets picked up and makes that sharp turn toward the north and sometimes it's pretty difficult to forecast when we have deep systems interacting with the fast trade wind flow in the central Caribbean so it's not really a surprise that the models are struggling here but it also makes uh, our lives a little bit harder as it's difficult to see when this is going to happen but if you look at the GFS again Monday morning here's the European it's still a little bit slower but you actually see it shifted east on the latest run uh, the ensemble mean is still to the west of the operational but this current run did shift a little bit east for the moment so right now uh, showing some threat to Haiti in, in general these models again threaten somewhere between Haiti Jamaica and eastern Cuba one of those three countries is likely to get a direct hit and uh, again the GFS continues to be faster showing it in the southern Bahamas by Tuesday if we look at the European we see how much slower it is still back near Haiti at this time so although the models are closer together now they still defer on forward speed and the reason this matters is because if we look uh, here at the GFS upper pattern the players continue to be an upper low over the Gulf of Mexico a ridge to the east of the hurricane and then this this large Rex like block up over southeast Canada and the eastern US with this upper low that has been over the Ohio Valley kind of remaining over New England and it's not yet clear whether this low is going to leak out into this trough over the North Atlantic or sit around in here and stay over New England and the models have not yet come into a consistent solution for what will happen with this upper low. The reason that matters is because it influences how much this ridge builds in near Bermuda east of Matthew. So this upper low is going to be a problem for forecasting over the next few days. At five days out here it's very difficult to know where this little low will actually be. Very difficult five days out. Now if we look at the GFS even farther out on Wednesday you can see the system moving due north through the Bahamas but the European continues to lag behind here much slower in the southeastern Bahamas and again you can see that the pattern isn't even that much different on the models we still have this this little low underneath this big block over New England on both models here the European still has that low but by virtue of being slower with Matthew it allows this trough over the Gulf to back toward the south a little bit quicker relative to the storm and it allows this ridge to build in a little bit more to the north of it because the longer the storm sits down here to the south the longer this low has to leave the longer this low has to leave and then we have a trough over the north atlantic a trough over the great plains and so naturally ridging will try to build over the western atlantic and eastern seaboard during the middle part of next week so the slower the hurricane is the more chance that the ridging builds to its north and forces it more toward the united states coastline in the longer term so at the moment uh, there's still some disagreement here the GFS solution would favor a track more to the north and the potential to avoid the United States altogether whereas the European solution is a little less clear there's perhaps a greater chance of it eventually clipping uh, some part of the eastern US on this kind of pattern but this is day six highly uncertain at this point still and we really can't say for certain whether Florida is safe or whether the Carolinas are safe I really cannot say at this point it's just something to keep an eye on it's still many days out just make sure you have your plan ready just in case the hurricane comes your direction but for now all we're really certain about is that Cuba Jamaica Haiti and the Bahamas are likely to see direct impacts from Matthew in four five or six days so this is the National Hurricane Center official track again showing the west southwest dip over the next couple of days and by Friday and Saturday still bringing perhaps tropical storm conditions to portions of northern South America and the southern Caribbean islands and then this turn to the north on Sunday is likely to occur and bring it somewhere in the middle here of this triangle between Haiti eastern Cuba 
and Jamaica, and it's not clear where exactly the hurricane may pass, but regardless, these are mountainous countries, and this will bring, bring likely very bad flooding problems to all three of these countries, regardless of exactly where it tracks, as heavy rains can extend far from the center, and mudslides and inland flooding can cause major problems for these countries in these mountainous regions. So this is a dangerous, dangerous storm for the Greater Antilles in general uh, as we head through the weekend and into the early part of next week. Again, exact track uncertain, but in general, a northward path is expected, and the Bahamas also have to be on the lookout here. The track is likely to be somewhere through the Bahamas through early next week as well, and will likely re-strengthen on the other side of Cuba after briefly weakening after passing over the mountainous regions of the island uh, somewhere in this region here. Likely to hit mountains of some kind, but strengthening on the other side may occur, and the Bahamas may be dealing with a strong hurricane as well by early next week. Right now the National Hurricane Center brings this up to 105 miles per hour of wind uh, sustained uh, once it moves toward this area in the northern Caribbean, but again rainfall may be an even bigger threat as it often is than the wind. So we'll keep a very close eye on Matthew. Again, long-term threats uh, kind of uncertain beyond the northern Caribbean and the Bahamas, uh, but we'll keep an eye out here in the southeast United States as it could get uncomfortably close in the longer term. So we'll just keep an eye out for now while things remain a little bit uncertain. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.